Jalen, you were on the Fab Five, and that's one of the, the legendary college basketball teams of all time. But a generation before the Fab Five, there was Hoya Paranoia. There was what John Thompson did at Georgetown. And it, it almost feels to me like you and, and your guys were descendants of that tree in a way. And, and so with that thought in mind, I wonder your thoughts this morning on the passing of the legendary John Thompson. Absolutely descendants of the John Thompson tree, an icon, a legend, and a father figure. And people, I don't want you to take that term lightly. He was a powerful, unapologetic black man. And also his physical stature. If you look at how tall he was, his dark skin, him having a towel over his shoulder. For a lot of white people at the time, Green, it was really intimidating. It was really menacing. And so for black players, it was refreshing to see somebody in his position to actually love black players the way he did. I'm not sure if you guys talked about how he walked off the floor mm -hmm. during the Prop 48 at the time. Athletes were stigmatized. Basically, right now, it's happening in a different way, how your quality of your education is defined by your zip code, where in theory, collegiate players weren't allowed to play based on the Prop 48. And as somebody that was fortunate enough to pass the ACT score, I remember being one of those players just biting his nails, wondering, am I going to be eligible to play basketball based on the fact that I need to take a, an achievement test that doesn't necessarily reflect what I'm learning in school on a daily basis as a Detroit Public High School student. He was a champion as a player, won two with the Boston Celtics, three Final Fours with Georgetown, won one championship. And as a young basketball player, I'll never forget screaming at the TV, feeling like Villanova was stalling the ball against Georgetown. I was rooting for them. And they, I felt like they were stalling the ball, Greeny. And for, for John Thompson, yeah, we know about the great players. Patrick Ewing, Alonzo Mourning, Dikembe Mutombo, my former teammate, Alonzo Mourning. But I'm telling you, a lot of the things that we're trying to fight for now in the NBA bubble that has permeated throughout society as it relates to Black Lives Matter, that's who John Thompson was. And I'm glad that I've been bringing his name up in these conversations. Let's make sure we give John Thompson his proper due as somebody that made sure that he elevated all of his players, not only on the floor, but off the floor as an unapologetic black man. Well, let's do it now. So, so we use the phrase, Jalen, ahead of his time all the time, right? That's a commonly used expression. Well, 31 years before... The NBA players boycotted games this past week. 31 years before that, John Thompson, wow. and we, we did talk about it earlier, and you just pointed it out, walked off the floor and before a home game against Boston College to protest Prop 48 that he felt was unfairly uh, stigmatizing primarily black players. So he was genuinely ahead of his time. And, and in life, you can sometimes look at those things and say, if not for that, who knows what other things don't wind up happening subsequently? So in, in many ways, John Thompson really was ahead of his time. Absolutely, Greeny. And unfortunate, even when we're the majority, like collegiate football and basketball, the NBA and the NFL, a lot of times we still have to fight for our equal rights and our power. And a lot of times we only get one. And follow me here. President Barack Obama, we only got one. Masai Ujiri, right now in the NBA, we only got one. Um, John Thompson, the way he was the first collegiate black head coach to win a championship, there are 80% of players that play college basketball that are black. 80%. But yet only 24% of black coaches? That lets you know that when an incident happens in the bubble, oh, we need to go get Michael Jordan to talk to the players because he's the only black player that used to be, that's now an owner, but he can relate. That's what John Thompson represented, somebody that can relate. Yes, I've said many times this morning so far, Jay, that it feels like we have really two completely separate conversations to have this morning. One is exactly that one, John Thompson and his cultural impact. Let's also give the man his due as a basketball coach. Um, that, that, that was his life's work on the floor, and very few have ever done it better. And you talk about those teams with Ewing, and there were others, and Iverson came later. Um, but one of the great programs in the history of the sport that he built there for three decades. Absolutely. And Greeny, 
a lot of times when you're talking about the success of a program, so it's the recruiting, and then it's the student athlete part. And that stat of the players that played for him four seasons, only two of them didn't graduate. Only two of them. That means when I walk into your living room and I tell your parents that I'm going to make sure that you graduate from college, there are a lot of people that have played lip service to that. He was actually doing it. And you were right. The greatness of the player that he was able to produce, not only in college, but in the pros, future Hall of Famers, was truly outstanding. He definitely will be missed. Yes, and, and Dick Vitale brought it up earlier, and it's an important point to make again, the quality of of the young men that he coached and you see what they've gone on to do in their lives and what Matumbo has gone on to do in his life globally and what Morning has gone on to do in his life and Ewing is coaching at his alma mater and Allen Iverson genuinely literally said at his Hall of Fame speech that John Thompson saved his life.